Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Uh, I have a couple of wines in front of me from the same winery. It's the, uh, well, it's a branch of Conchi Toro in Chile, and uh, I've got a Merlot and I've got a Syrah from them. So I will uh, do them in that order. Uh, and the reason I've got them here, someone sent me a sample of the Syrah and I had a sample of the Merlot sitting in my uh, cellar just saying, hello, hello, I need to be drunk at some time soon. Uh, so I'm trying them both with uh, a set of uh, friends this evening and uh, I'm going to do them blind and see if they can work out First of all, where they're from, and then which way around they're going to be. Uh, but uh, I know which way around they're going to be. I'd better set into them. So the first one is the 2012 Merlot uh, from Pumo. And um, uh, I'll just d dig into it. I don't think it, it, this is proper Merlot rather than any, any Carmen air in there. And 14.5% uh, volume. I give it a whirl. There was a gentle chocolatey, almost a minty black currant edge in here, um, and there's some a black currant is a characteristic I get in a load of Chilean wine. Um, maybe not as strong and black currant pastel like um, as, uh, as as in many here, and for the for me this is a good thing. I, 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 a dodge of black currant pastels soon appalls, as I'm sure you're all aware. Um, but here it feels like there is going to be some of that classic uh, Merlot. Uh, earthy fruit. I call it. I think. I think Merlot and Cabernet as well always need this little bit of uh, slight green edge to uh, uh, keep them fresh. Otherwise, they're just sort of like rather over fruity blobs. Let's see whether this is um, a tasty fruity blob. Well, it's fourteen and a half percent alcohol, but it's a lovely fruit freshness there, and uh, there's a zing of a, a fresh acidity, um, and there's this uh, yeah general black currant, blackberry, um, plummy juiciness. Um, but reined in by a mixture of that acidity um, and uh, but also fine grain tannins it's got a really nice uh, really nice structure and uh, uh, I mean it's 2012 now it, we are in in spring 2016 here so it's four years old uh, but it's looking fresh and um, with some delicacy and with this lovely freshness of fruit makes me think it's going to go uh, on and on for uh, quite a bit longer very tasty let's see whether the syrup is the same well, it won't be the same, but if it's as, see, uh, as tasty. Uh, so this is 2013 uh, Marcus de Casaconcha Syrah uh, from Buin. Uh, and, uh, I mean, Buin and Pumo, uh, they're both parts of the, um, of, of the Central Valley, uh, and they come from slightly better-known regions. So, um, um, yeah, I mean, Buin is, is part of uh, the Maipo uh, region, uh, whereas Pumo is, is down in, in the Rappel Valley. Not quite... Uh, in and I don't think it's it, I think it's sort of inland from where Colchagua and uh, Cachapoal uh, come out, so it's not fully fledged uh, as as one of those. Does that make sense? Maybe I'll put a little map up and you can see where they are. Oh, I've got a little dribble in the bottom of my glass. Let's pour some in here. It smells richer, wilder, spicier, um, uh, and um, warmer uh, red berry fruit. I mean, the, the, the first one had this uh, sort of blackcurrant freshness. Here, there's this warm, ripe, slightly herby, herb-tinged berry character. Uh, it feels like it's going to be, yeah, bit, have a bit more weight behind it, um, but uh, I don't think it's too much different in alcohol. Funny, weight of flavour, but it still feels like it's going to have this freshness because there's nothing there that's, that uh, smells over jammy or overdone or over extracted. That's another really classy one. Um, generous and juicy, uh, but with this dry finish. There's the flesh there, uh, there's this spice, there's a little bit of uh, toastiness from oak. I was getting a little bit touch of that in the, uh, in the first one, but... Uh, it feels like uh, the oak is there, very much in the background, and as the wine just opens up, or as, as you give it further age in bottle, uh, it will just recede into the background, allowing this generous, warm, herby, spicy fruit to, uh, uh, to shine through. Uh, it's one of my problems with some uh, Chilean uh, Syrahs, in fact a lot of Chilean wines, is reduction. Uh, they've not let air get into, into the fermentations, but here, and, and as a result, sometimes you get these uh, really quite... Uh, I mean, it's, it's funny, because some of the perfumes that you get as a result of doing and making wines that way are quite attractive, this sort of slightly herbal, peppery uh, character, but um, sometimes there's just too much of it. Here, it's this warm, round heartiness. And uh, yeah, it's it's they, they've done both they've done both of those really nicely. I mean, it's a it's an admirable range. I mean, I I, I think Conchi Toro is probably uh, my favourite large winemaking concern anywhere in the world. Uh, if you see the if you're on if you ever get a wine list and you don't recognise any of the other names, but Conchi Toro is on there, uh, it's a pretty good bet that the wine is going to be at least drinkable and at best 
well, I mean, this, this is only halfway up their their quality ladder, but these these are these are pretty decent wines, and uh, uh, I think the uh, the folk this evening will enjoy them. See you soon.